Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Hoppy, Hoppy, this is Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. <laughs> Ah, what's going on? This is Hoppy Hour. I'm your host, Ryan Hoppy, hanging out with you and you. And don't think I forgot about you. Leave me a voicemail, 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. This is heard on the Quad Pod Network at QODPOD.com slash Ryan Hoppy. It's heard on Z Radio Live every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time on the Odyssey app. And that's about it. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Lizzo is the latest celeb to speak out and open up about personal hygiene, but this... Why? Uh... I think it's time for Lizzo to make some new music. It seems like she's out and about hitting on Chris Evans being kind of weird. She's out and about crying on videos. And um, where's your new music? This time it isn't about showering. It's about deodorant. So let's get into what she said. It doesn't surprise me whatsoever. A lot of things surprise me, but most things don't surprise me. But I'm definitely not surprised that Lizzo, as we're going to find out, doesn't wear deodorant. I just kind of look at Lizzo, and you can take it or leave it on it, however the hell you want to read what I'm going to say, because I'm being very vague. But Lizzo just, just when I found out that Lizzo didn't use deodorant, I wasn't like, oh my God, no way. Over the past few months, it's become a trend for celebs to discuss their hygiene habits, and the internet has been shook, to say the least. How lonely is your life where you're getting shook by finding out the personal hygiene of celebrities? I mean, I like to roast and make fun of and call out all these phony, baloney celebrities on this podcast known as Hoppy Hour. Hoppy. But at the same time, I'm not living through it. I'm not going, oh my God, my life is shook because Lizzo's never heard of Under Armour. From celebs like Jake Gyllenhaal, Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, and more admitting to not showering themselves or their kids daily. They don't Okay. I feel icky and gross if I don't shower every day. It's because I'm a very sweaty guy. Now, I've learned from my girlfriend, who is so beautiful. Oh, and she's with me for the cloud of working in Tampa Bay Radio. She's very good. She's a beautician, and she does much more. And the best part about her is the fact that she's taught me about hair, and now I don't use shampoo on my hair every day. But I can't imagine people going, oh, I'm not going to shower today. You just feel gross. You feel itchy and just dirty smell so you know it's hard to well that's right they do <laughs> i'm a big fan of waiting for the steak to up- hell yeah there is like dwayne the rock johnson saying he falls on the totally other end of the spectrum and showers multiple times a day well yeah he's working out all day he's gonna be sweaty man celebs have just been more and more open about their hygiene habits lately because they know that they don't have any new creative content to make like Kristen Bell, when's the, last, when's the last time she made something you're going to want to watch? So she's got to talk about her hygiene. Lizzo, when's the last time she made something you want to listen to? So you got to talk about your hygiene. The celebrities that are coming out and talking about the hygiene are the same celebrities with nothing really going on in their career. They have a lot of clout, but their clout is running out. 
So they go, how can I get the immediate boost? How can I get the immediate upgrade of attention? Oh, I'm going to talk about how I don't wear deodorant. And the latest to chime in on personal hygiene is Lizzo. We all know Lizzo is the queen of relatability and doesn't hold back when it comes to saying how she really feels. Oh, so relatable. This millionaire that can't find a man. Oh, mm. so relatable. I just, oh man, you look at Lizzo and you go, that is somebody who can relate with the everyday person. Lizzo. <laughs> Well, on her IG stories, Lizzo reshared a post from Hollywood Unlocked that says Matthew McConaughey hasn't used deodorant in 35 years. Again, another actor who really hasn't been relevant unless he says something outspoken. All these actors, you don't see the ones that are making movies. I'm trying to think of an example. I can't think of one. You don't see an Oscar winner going, oh my God, I don't wear a deodorant. They're busy making movies. You don't see Jack Harlow going, oh, I don't wear Under Armour. He's banging every side chick, and he's the pride and joy of Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> people that are busy, people that are creative, people that are talented don't need to go to the low brow of talking about personal hygiene or flatulence. It's like whenever a radio show goes down that path, it means they literally have nothing going on. So it's the one thing that everybody can relate to is like flatulence and all that because everybody does it. It's like the most hack thing ever. I have nothing going on. Let's talk about poop because I am creative. Yep, you heard that right. The 51-year-old has apparently ditched deodorant for the majority of his life. In a re recent interview with SiriusXM, Matthew McConaughey's Tropic Thunder co-star Yvette Nicole Brown revealed what he really smells like without wearing deodorant. Sex. I remember that Matthew McConaughey said that he did not use deodorant and that he didn't have an odor. So my first thought was, I'm gonna get as close as I can to him to see if he's right. He You're does not have out. an odor. He smells Seriously? like, he smells like granola and good living. I bet she found out. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. I wear deodorant, I do, I do, for uh, most of the time. Not every time, but most of the time, usually when the girlfriend's like, uh, get your act together. Happy hour will be right back. Ah, uh, let, me, let me tell you right now. This following segment was brought to you by the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company at TampaBayHotSauce.com. There has all the locations where you can get their hot sauce in person in Florida. But you don't live in Florida. Don't worry. Don't have a panic attack. All you really got to do is go to TampaBayHotSauce.com. Get it? Got it? Good. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Someone hit me up with a flame. I'm having a nut for Uh, light him up. Meet what? Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my rifter. I'm going to tear up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. That's my boss. I don't think Meatwad should be hanging around with these moon people. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Is your significant other driving you nuts? The self-proclaimed expert Ryan Hoppy will listen to your problems at 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-49-HOPPY. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Watch out, Hoppy is about to rant. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go! Oh, yeah. 856-49-HOPPY. There, you can text me whenever, and I'll be sure to get the text throughout the day. So let's say you're listening at 3 in the afternoon, and you want to hit me up. 
856-494-6773. And you can leave a voicemail and I can call you back on this show live when I record it on demand. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Get it? Got it? Good. Why do I keep saying that? That was so much fun. That was just so much fun. I, I spent a lot of time studying and getting ready for it. I definitely wanted it, you know, was interested in finding a way to make it work with my schedule and yeah. their schedule and filming. Not possible. Jeopardy may still be able to score a touchdown when picking its new host. You know what they did there? <laughs> Yuck. Aaron Rodgers revealed he was totally game for the job after yeah. guest hosting the beloved quiz show earlier this year. He was okay. Better than I could do, but at the same time, I feel like if it was anybody else, you'd go, oh, that was all right. But, oh, it's Aaron Rodgers? So a professional football player can actually complete a full sentence and continue to read big words on TV and completely do a complete replica of Alex Trebek? Wow. Round of applause. That's all that was. Nothing more. And absolutely... Positively, nothing less. The Green Bay Packers quarterback was among a roster of celebrities and media personalities who stepped in for the late Alex Trebek, Mm -hmm. and fan reception for Aaron's turn was so positive that many speculated he could hang up his helmet and take the podium full time. I mean, he really should have pushed for it. I feel like he didn't push enough because he went to training camp, but I feel like if he didn't go to training camp or something, I feel like he might have had a chance on Jeopardy, but I just... They need him every day to do like 40 shows. Rogers reflected on his Jeopardy experience in a new interview with Sirius XM's Mad Dog Sports Radio on Friday, Mm -hmm. sharing that his time on the show was not only a dream come true, but something he was hoping to continue as an exciting new opportunity off the field. When you're just a super Jeopardy fan like I am, it's just so so special to be on that stage and be in that environment. You know that... You're walking in the footsteps of legends. If they offered you the job, would you have taken it? Yeah, I definitely would have. He thought about that for a second. He's like, um, yeah, I'm going to get the hell out of Green Bay. If they would have figured out a way to work it, make it work with my schedule, yeah, for sure. That's the thing, though, working with the schedule. Like, he's thinking, I'll do one or two shows every month. (laughs) And uh, they're like, no, we need about 70 shows today. NFL icon didn't specify if we need more shows in a week than you've ever played professional football games. Can you do that? He would still be up for taking the job. The position is available once again. So we'll find out about that right now. This Jeopardy news. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. This Mike Richards guy came off like such an ass wipe. Oh, what a douche. And then you find out he's literally a douche. Mike Richards is stepping down as the host of Jeopardy after receiving backlash for sexist comments he made in the past. He just seems like that privileged, overpaid, white, elitist douchebag who has to let you know how much is the bottle of wine he just spent at dinner, has to let you know about all his new gadgets. He's an elitist douche. And for taking on the hosting gig when he was already the executive producer of the show. Sounds like a little bit of a conflict of interest. Not that big of a conflict of interest. Host and producer, no big deal. That's not a power trip or anything. (laughs) Ugh. And for taking on the hosting gig when he was already the executive producer of Mm -hmm. the show. And now, here is the executive producer of Jeopardy, Mike Richards. And the record for most HR complaints in the Jeopardy office. Gilbert, thank you very much, sir. Welcome, everyone. Richards, who was announced as a new permanent host yeah. earlier this month, yeah, we heard. made the announcement that he would no longer host the show in an internal note to staff on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, people that are working within offices, like, you get that juicy email about somebody that got let go. <laughs> and they go, we just want to say thank you for your time with the company, blah, blah, blah. We wish them luck on their future endeavors. Or if it's kind of a kind 
controversial person that gets let go from your job. They don't really talk about it, but the whole office does. Oh, man, I would love to be a fly on the wall of all the people that he bothered. I don't think people were like, no, no, Mike Richards is leaving. He's such a good guy. I want to hang out with him. I want to have Mike Richards date my daughter. Mm -hmm. He also revealed that production would be canceled for the day. In the message, yeah. Richard said it pains him that the past incidents and comments have cast such a shadow on Jeopardy, adding that. I love how he's putting it on Jeopardy. He's now like my past comments that represent me, myself, and I. That's too much of a narcissist and ass wipe this guy is. He's like, it's putting the pressure on Jeopardy when literally nobody knew who you were last week and no one's going to go, remember when Alex Trebek's producer was a creep in the office? Oh, that totally reflects on Jeopardy and Alex Trebek. No, it reflects on you, you sociopathic twat. He was deeply honored to be asked to host the syndicated show and was thrilled by the opportunity to expand his role. Yeah, I went from being sort of power trip to full on power trip. Yeah, I listen to heavy metal when I go to work to really charge up my toxic masculinity. My phone's already on 20% because I was out all night buying, I was out all night buying drinks for all the boys. So while my phone is charging in the car, I'm charging up, man. So I'm Mike Richards, and I'm a manly man. Oh, good riddance. It's very important to keep it going. Yeah. But the 46-year-old TV exec said over the last several days, it became clear that moving forward as host would be too much of a distraction for the fans and not the right move for the show. Yeah. Not the right move for you, too. Seems like he's putting everything on the show and none of it on him. Richards adds that he is stepping down as host effective immediately. Oh, no, no, no. You're leaving? <sighs> Damn it. And as the search for a new host begins, guest hosts will be brought on in the interim. He concluded. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> oh, good. Can't wait. I've never watched an episode. I feel dumb. His note, writing, quote, I want to apologize to each of you for the unwanted negative attention that has come to Jeopardy over the last few weeks and for the confusion and delays this is now causing. It's, it's this unwanted negative attention to Jeopardy thing. It's like, but this is about you. This is about Mike Richards. This isn't about the whole Jeopardy cubicle of interns that you were probably treating like garbage. This is about you. And you keep saying all the negative attention that came to Jeopardy. No, it's no one's going to quit watching Jeopardy because of you. You're just going to be forgotten. I mean, you literally have the most Caucasian boring name of all time, Mike Richards. So in two years, we're not going to even remember you. We're going to be like, oh, Mike Richards, the new rapper. Who? Mike Richards, who? I know I have a lot of work to do to regain your trust and confidence. Yeah, you're not getting that back. We're trying to build a kinder, gentler society. A yeah, spokesperson for Sony worked. Pictures Television, which produces Jeopardy, also released a statement to ET saying they support Richard's decision to step down as the host. Yeah, it was his decision. Oh, yeah, I got the dream job, but I'm going to quit. I totally don't want to think of any way to make this work. I'm going to quit. It's not Jeopardy forcing me out. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Adding, quote, we were surprised this week to learn of Mike's 2013-2014 podcast mm -hmm. and the offensive language he used in the past. Yeah. We have spoken with him about our concerns and our expectations moving forward Got it. mike has been with us for the last two years and has led the jeopardy team through the most challenging time the show has ever experienced following alex trebek's death it is our, our hope that as ep he will continue to do so with professionalism and respect so he's not really leaving he's going to be executive producer so that's, uh, that's going to be weird in the office i'm sure he'll be even more of a gentleman uh but this thing He's been with you for the last two years. So when he keeps saying this thing of, oh, the negative attention that it's bringing to Jeopardy, it's, uh, not really. They're just going to want you off the TV screen. And you've only been with the show for like two of the 1,000 years it's been on. I heard Shakespeare watched it every night. Respect. The news comes one day after Richards issued a statement saying he was deeply sorry for past controversial comments he made that were 
resurfaced by the ringer. The yeah, the ringer is like, you don't ever want to piss off any of those woke liberal websites. The ringer, dead spin, all those websites that are super woke. They literally, I truly believe, because they'll have these superhero, super woke article writers, these columnists that are going to change the world with their opinions. I would play superhero music, but then I'd be able to copyright little strike. So I'm not in the mood for that. I like having my show up. But what I'm saying is you literally have these websites of these super woke people, and I believe they have interns scour anybody who has a new position, and then they go, we found this episode from uh, August 24th, 2013. Outlet reported that during his podcast that he started in 2013 called mm -hmm. The Random Show, oh, cool. Richards made multiple questionable comments about women's bodies. In his statement on Thursday, Richards said, quote, It is humbling to confront a terribly embarrassing moment of misjudgment, thoughtlessness, and insensitivity from nearly a decade ago. Oh, but if, if you were so sorry, you would have confronted it sooner, and not when you got caught, you sociopathic piece of garbage. Oh, looking back now, there is no excuse, of course, for the comments I made on this podcast, and I am deeply sorry. Kind of reminds me of that uh, episode of South Park with the BP oil spill where they're like, we're sorry, we're sorry. Kind of the vibes, kind of the energy that I'm getting from this is the we're sorry from South Park as I loaded up 856-49-HAPPY. 856-49-4673. Hello, I'm Tony Hayward president and ceo of bp yeah our accidental drilling spill again in the gulf is a tragedy that should have never happened and to all those affected i want to say we are deeply sorry we're sorry we're sorry we're sorry yeah sorry got it we're sorry we're sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. We're sorry. I forgive you. Happy, happy, happy. This is Happy Hour. Ah, uh, we have so much to get into. Ah, uh, do we? Happy Hour will be right back. This following segment of Happy Hour Happy. has been brought to you by FitsageFitness.com. When I tell you that Devin Prasad at Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram, when I tell you that he is the best trainer in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't lead you down the wrong path. <laughs> I'm already speaking my mind and saying it like it is about celebrities, so why would I lie to you about workout trainers? Go to fitsagefitness.com. There, you can sign up for a workout with Devin Prasad within Tampa Bay. But hey, don't freak out. Don't have a panic attack if you find out that you don't uh, live in Florida. Like, you're just like, actually, I, I live in Omaha. And then you're like, oh, I totally can't do a workout with Devin because I live in Omaha and he lives in Florida. No, 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 no. That's excuses and that's for douchebags. Here's the deal. He can do virtual workouts. So you basically got to make it happen, man. You got to just do it. <sighs> but you got to do it, man. You can do it. It's all at fitsagefitness.com. Tell him that you heard about it on- Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. I'm getting good at this, pressing these buttons. Just saying. <laughs> right when I said that, <laughs> I had this on mute. <laughs> uh, it's called getting cocky. It would have sounded like this. Mind is like a- Ah, uh, man. Let's do a redo. Let's talk about having Hank Hill. Are you looking at loser? I am. You're a loser. I am. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Yeah. Well, all you the should time. be because you are dirt. You make me sick, you big baby. Listen to Hoppy Hour by searching Hoppy Radio on your favorite podcasting platform. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is the most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Yeah. 
Clarkson filed for divorce from her husband Brandon Blackstock back in June 2020. And now a source tells ET she mm -hmm. is ready to put her marriage behind her, but she's... Oh, I'm totally sure she's never going to bring it up on her sitcom. She's so over it, just like how Selena is over Justin Bieber. <laughs> Get the hell out of here not happy she has to pay one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per month in spousal support you know oh, but when a man has to pay spousal support that's way too much and he complains he is completely crucified i never think it's okay to complain about spousal support because you know what you signed up for and you didn't sign up for the prenup so i can't really you know, feel bad for you. But at the same time, whenever a man complains about child support and spousal support, he comes off like a douchebag. But when a woman does it, they go, oh, she's just going through hard times. Like, no, she's just as much of a dirtbag as the man would be. No, it's just divorce is a really thing. Yeah, it sucks. Last week, E.T. learned that the 39-year-old singer's prenuptial agreement has been validated by the judge in her divorce case. Mm -hmm. The prenup segregates all assets and income derived during her marriage to the 44-year-old talent manager yeah. and gives her possession of the Montana ranch where he is currently living. It's also where their family quarantined together in 2020. Yeah. Now a source tells E.T., quote, Kelly is ready to put her marriage behind her and move on from her ex, Brandon. Kelly is extremely happy her prenup was held up, and she gets what she worked so hard for. Last month, a judge ruled that Kelly will pay her ex $150,000 per month in spousal support, as well as $45,601 per month in child support, and pay $1.25 million towards Brandon's attorney fees and costs for their ongoing divorce. Now ET source says, quote, she's not happy to be paying $150,000 to Brandon in spousal support, but is hoping once the divorce is finalized, that amount will be lowered. Mm -hmm. Kelly filed for divorce in June 2020 after nearly seven years of marriage. Sounds they fun. share two children together, yeah. seven-year-old River Rose and five-year-old Remington Alexander. Got it. And in November 2020, she won primary custody of the kids. All right, suddenly I don't care. When I start talking about the family drama... Ah, who am I to talk about pretending I don't like family drama? I talk about these Kardashians, damn it. They're so crazy and wild. Kylie's going to have another baby. After months of speculation from fans, mm. Page Six just reported that Kylie Jenner is pregnant with baby number two with Travis Scott. Let's get into everything we know. So basically three months ago, Travis Scott was just going at it with Kylie. <laughs> He's like, I just don't feel like pulling out today. And she's like, who cares? I'm worth $1 billion. If you've been keeping up with Kylie Jenner these last few months, you know that fans have been wondering whether or not she's expecting another baby. Mm -hmm. From her low-key birthday celebration to ordering vegan sushi to some baggy clothes to... God, I feel like the farts are bad with vegan sushi. All the rumors that Kylie and Travis are officially back together, fans have been wondering if that means they're planning for baby number two. Mm -hmm. Some people are convinced that Kylie has been doing her best to hide her pregnancy this time around, just like she did with Stormy. They're doing this because they're having to be relevant. They're going off of TV, everyone sees that Courtney and Travis Barker might live happily ever after. Kim Kardashian's trying her hardest to be a lawyer. Chloe's trying her hardest to make Tristan Thompson into a good man. It's not possible because he plays in the NBA. And Lord knows they might have more side chicks than they do points per game. But what I'm saying is Chris Kardashian goes, there's nothing going on with us. Kylie? And she's like, yes, mom. I won't take the pill today. But no pictures of Kylie. No videos of Kylie. For the birthday post, Kim and everybody do throwback pictures. But again, no pictures of Kylie. Not even from that night. As we All right. So that means that she's pregnant and can't drink, I guess. Uh, what should we talk about? Oh, Kanye West is single. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw that coming. Oh, Kanye West. Oh, such a romantic guy that I totally would trust. Yeah, totally not a sociopath. Looks like Kanye West and Arena Shake have called it quits. No. The rapper and the supermodel's summer romance is over. Okay. I don't even think there was romance. They're just banging. 
she's kind of over Bradley Cooper and he's not really over Kim. You want to have some emotionless sex? And he's like, sure. According to multiple reports published on Saturday. Yeah. Kanye and Arena were first linked back in May and celebrated his 44th birthday together in wow. France weeks later. Though the 35-year-old runway queen was reportedly upset over breakup rumors surrounding her and Kanye as recently as last month, sources told People Magazine that things were never serious between them. Nah, he was just, you know, banging her out. And that Kanye didn't have time for a relationship in addition to working and spending time with his four kids with estranged wife, Kim Kardashian. Nah, if she was meant to be, you'd be hanging out with her. This is utter BS. Another insider revealed to Us Weekly that despite calling it quits, mm -hmm. Kanye and Arena, quote, never really started in the first place, yeah. adding that there's, quote, nothing going on there, and that Arena simply realized they, quote, aren't great romantic partners. Yeah. The news comes shortly after Kanye and Kim were spotted having lunch in Malibu, and the Skims found... Ah, uh, they so banged. ...under attended not one but two listening parties in Atlanta for Kanye's anticipated new album, Donda, in recent weeks. Good on Kim Kardashian for making sure she keeps the father around for all the kids they have, all 90 of them. Kim filed for divorce back in February after six years of marriage. We know. As for Arena, she and Bradley Cooper parted ways in 2019 and share three-year-old daughter, Leia. You know, Bradley Cooper has never been able to listen to Kanye West since May. <laughs> Kanye and Arena may have tried to give their connection a chance, but celebrity matchmaker Alessandra Conti from Matchmakers in the City mm -hmm. explained to Access Hollywood in June why she believes the hip-hop mogul and the former Victoria's Secret angel aren't a long-term match. I don't know. They have nothing in common. And <sighs> uh, Never mind. Kanye needs to be with somebody that is able to be with him at the drop of a hat. Oh, that sounds fun. And that's what... Not being independent and needing everybody else to help you out. Oh, so sexy. Kim has been saying in recent episodes of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, he needs a hype woman as opposed to somebody who is also equally in the spot. So basically, he's a sociopath and he needs someone to always kiss his ass. Um, I don't know what the proper term would be for somebody who is what Demi Lovato identifies as. But she's no different. She's a sociopath and she likes to get her ass kissed and hangs around hype women. Around a year after their split, Demi Lovato says that breaking up with their ex-fiance, Max Eric, was the best thing that could have happened to them. Let's get into it. De yeah, you guys weren't meant to be. I don't know if you're really meant to be with anybody. Demi Lovato spoke with Kate Sozin of the 19th Represent Summit for their virtual event earlier this week. Oh, uh, man, we were all there just like, woo, she's talking about her past, riveting content. Again, Demi Lovato, you might as well talk about your personal hygiene besides talking about heroin and trying to ruin small businesses that sell yogurt that you don't approve of in Los Angeles and making a documentary about how it's nobody else's fault and, or it's everybody else's fault and not really your fault. Besides living in the past and talking about your boyfriends, oh man, your career is killing it right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, uh, local radio show, please play Demi Lovato. She's so good. During the conversation, Demi spoke about the journey of self-discovery that led them to coming out as non-binary in May of this year. Mm -hmm. Demi said living through the pandemic was a big factor in this journey because it was March 2020 when they were, quote, starting to identify as non-binary. Yeah, relatable. Not that I was non-binary in March 2020, but I just, I just identified as like somebody that just had no idea where his life was going. But it was kind of a good thing. For a lot of people, the quarantine was horrendous. I'm quite aware I lost one of my closest friends to COVID. So, but there was COVID, not, not COVID. I mean, I did have COVID. It sucked. It was like a 14 day hangover. Imagine going to bed at 4 a.m., getting up at 7 a.m., and going to your factory job and you're really hungover. That feeling was me all day. But what I'm saying is this there was some good that came out of COVID. Like, I was able to, like, work out and find myself and appreciate the moment and get a hot girlfriend that loves me. Oh, yeah. She's totally with me for the cloud of 70 downloads. Oh, yeah. 
What I'm saying is a lot of people found themselves during the 2020, 2021 era. And one of them was Demi Lovato. And one of them was me. Demi continued on saying, then I met someone and I got into this straight relationship. Mm -hmm. And that was great. But that led me to ignoring all the parts of myself that I didn't think were digestible for my partner at the time. That's that's a weird way of... (laughs) Wording it, digestible. Who ended up becoming my fiance. In hindsight, the dissolvement of that relationship was actually probably the best thing that's happened to me because of what that led inside of myself. Oh, I'm sorry that happened. Um, She likes to use really big words because she's got to be the smartest in the room, the dissolvement, digestible. As fans recall, Demi and Max got engaged in July 2020. And who saw that and was like, ah, they're going to live happily ever after. (laughs) But parted ways just months later in September. Yeah. After calling off the engagement, Demi was empowered to, quote, stand on my own two feet without needing someone else to validate me or to make me feel accepted. Yeah, got it. They explained, quote, when I said goodbye to that relationship, I also said goodbye to everything that was holding me back from being my most authentic self. Yeah, so your authentic self is being this really irritating narcissist that makes everything about you and tried to ruin the business of a yogurt shop and you've done this and that. That's your authentic self? That's what you got from the breakup was to be even more of a witch, to be even more of a sociopath. That's what you learned in your self-discovery after a breakup. Oh, man. Wow. I'm really happy for you. I mean, I'm glad that she came out as non-binary and gets to be who she wants to be, but with her personality, her life, whatever she identifies as, I'm glad she came out as that. Whatever that hell you want to do as long as it doesn't involve children or animals and everything's consensual i don't really care what you identify as i don't really care who you sleep with so good for Danny lovato like you had maddie in the morning up in uh, massachusetts like the biggest show he's like oh yeah she's mentally ill she's so crazy i think she's mentally ill because she has to make everything about her but i don't think her coming out as non-binary was a sign of her being mentally ill she just came out as non-binary and maddie siegel the 71 year old morning show legend who i like to listen to he's like oh yeah she she sucks she's mentally ill i'm like oh my god that's why that's why radio's dying these baby boomers just won't go away That's when Demi, quote, really started to identify as non-binary. Okay, good, good, good. Get it, got it, got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Oh, Justin Timberlake was at Target. Oh, he's so relatable. <laughs> he's a man in the woods. Remember when he did that in 2018? <laughs> I'm going to dress up in some really upscale coats and just take pictures in the middle of the woods. I'm a man of the woods. I'm Justin Timberlake. I got a pedicure, a manicure, right before this, man. I also got a facial, and I put some things on my face. Yeah, I'm a man of the people. I'm Justin Timberlake. Wipe it down. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got icebreaker? Yeah, got it. I got the speaker and the drink. Yeah. What else did you want? Yeah, just a piece of gum. Has Justin Timberlake picked up an unexpected side hustle? What? The music superstar appeared to be working at a Target checkout aisle in Colorado recently, helping ring up items for TikTok user Douglas Anthony, who documented... Again, Justin Timberlake looked really bad in that Britney Spears documentary. Justin Timberlake had to say sorry seven months ago. Justin Timberlake, very irrelevant to get to millions of listens. I listen to him all the time, my love. My love, my love. But what I'm saying is this. He hasn't really made any good music. I mean, the music he made in 2018 was okay. Just, I don't need to hear it again. It was okay. Like every Timberlake song is good. He's one of my favorite singers. But at the same time, he's had a really bad year of PR. So of course he has to do something good on camera. It's like helping out the homeless and taking pictures. Ooh, look at me. I don't know why I'm doing this voice, but I'm taking a picture with these people that work at Target. Please think I'm a relatable good guy, please. 
the outing in an epic video that's already gotten nearly 2 million views as of Saturday. All right. So he's out there making sure that he kisses babies and cheats on his wife. Basically what politicians do. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment of Happy Hour has been brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts. When I tell you that Amir Academy of Martial Arts is the best MMA, MMA trainer, not just in the Bay Area, not just in Florida, but the whole wide universe, I am an absolutely, positively honest man of my words. Go to Amir Academy of Martial Arts.com and sign up for a class Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh, no. 76.2. Yeah, as we said. But I'm already 38.1. Got it. I've wasted half my life. His Midwest accent and rants are like endorphins for your workout. Are. You are listening to Hoppy Hour. We got it. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet that the other stations are tuned in to. Time to talk about OnlyFans. And you're going to love my surprising take, woke people. Ryan Hobby, he's definitely not woke. But I am. I swear. I swear to God. Don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. I swear. Oh, happy hot topic. All right. So as you recently heard, the app that was for gangbang pornography known as OnlyFans is getting rid of intercourse and graphic sexual material. You can do things to yourself. Oh, that's what I want to see. I'm already doing things to myself. I want to see someone else do things to themselves. Oh, so sexy. Oh, that's how I get my rocks off. Absolutely. Positively. No, thank you. But I will say this. OnlyFans is getting rid of porn. And it's like all this slut shaming from all these toxic masculinity reeking douchebags who literally probably watch so much porn. So you're slut shaming these hardworking women that you jerk off to. And let me explain this. (laughs) It's great to yell in the middle of an apartment. (laughs) Sure, my neighbors love me. Think about it this way. Everybody loves to slut shame a girl in porn, but you're watching her work. It's like saying, I hate this local radio show, but I listen to it all the time. And I call in and tweet at them. Or it's like saying, oh my God, you get the point. You absolutely positively get the point. So here's what I'm trying to say. It's really sad that all these dudes are like, <laughs> only fans are shutting down. You're going to see them flipping burgers at McDonald's. You do realize that a lot of these people were single mothers who were just trying to get by. I know a girl who did OnlyFans, and oh boy, she loved clam chowder, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, It was really weird. I was like, oh, I used to work with you, and now I see clam chowder. Why do you like clam chowder so much? (laughs) I got that from the great Mike Calta, the clam chowder uh, analogy. But uh, she was this girl that had clam chowder all over. Um, Yeah, she was uh, behind on rent, and one of my friends knows her, and um, it helped her get by. Like, These are people that are losing jobs. I know a lot of girls in porn, never banged any of them, but I know a lot of girls in porn through working in hot talk radio, and um, they're nice people. We sexualize them because we uh, have a good time, but at the same time, like, 
They're losing ten thousand dollars per month. Like the slut shaming is ridiculous. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure they would love to bang you. So uh, this is audio right here. Uh, Bella Thorne might also be to blame for OnlyFans because here's what happened. OnlyFans is shutting down the pornography because they had underage porn on there. But that's on OnlyFans for being dumb. Pornhub, literally the king of porn, even though it's spinkbang.com, uh, literally, they got caught with underage porn, so then you, hide, you had to identify yourself, and you have to be a verified model or a verified actor to have your videos on the website. So I don't know why OnlyFans wasn't having you be verified if you make a video. Like, think about it. Like, you have to be verified to drive Uber. You should be verified to do this <laughs> stick shift wherever, man. Yesterday it was announced that OnlyFans will ban sexually explicit content mm -hmm. starting in October, and Bella Thorne is being blamed. Of course. Uh, the, uh, the, the tone <laughs> of this reporter, she's uh, taking this report about Bella Thorne and all, all the talent she has, <laughs> and OnlyFans, all the credibility. <laughs> she's taking this uh, report very seriously. Yesterday, it was announced that OnlyFans will ban sexually explicit content starting in October, mm -hmm. and Bella Thorne is being blamed. Let's yeah. get into it. Okay. On Thursday, OnlyFans announced that their policies are changing to ban sexually explicit content. The move is extremely unexpected because the platform has become a well-known space for sex workers to create sexually explicit content for their followers. Mm -hmm. OnlyFans' 130 million users largely use the app to access this adult content but effective oh no 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 people are signing up for only fans to get dating advice i mean they might but there's some of those like celebrities on there yeah it was a bit of a scam october 1st only fans will quote prohibit the posting of any content containing sexually explicit conduct no that's what it's good for in order to ensure the war what is it good for absolutely nothing Porn, what is it good for? Absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Long-term sustainability of the platform and to continue to host an inclusive community of creators and fans, we must evolve our content guidelines. Yeah, the only, the only thing you can do is use your hands. Oh, that's just going to bring in nine bucks a month. Sadly, it probably will. OnlyFans said that creators will still be allowed to upload nude photos and- Oh yeah, because I don't know anywhere to get nude- That was what was so good about um, OnlyFans. Was if you were really into a girl, you could see videos you couldn't see anywhere else online. Now, I would never do that. But it's just, I know, like, and I'm not saying that, like, I, like, passive aggressively, like, I would never do that because spankbang.com, XNXX is pretty good, but spankbang, oh my God. So what I'm saying is the only thing OnlyFans had going for them was that you could see, like, exclusive content, but, like, that you couldn't see anywhere else. A nude photo of a girl? No. No. That's crazy. Videos as long as they are in accordance with company policy. Uh, it's going to be a problem. In terms of what this new... Too much nipple policy is exactly the company said it would reveal further details in the coming days <laughs> yeah coming days the company stated they are making these changes to quote comply with the requests of our banking partners and payout providers yeah all the companies all the credit cards didn't want to that's probably what it is all the credit cards were like yeah this is a little sketchy the statement continued quote it's all about the money 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 of course fans remains committed to the highest levels of safety and content moderation mm -hmm. on any social platform. Got All it. creators are verified prior to being able to upload any content to... So then why was there underage porn on your um, app? Why? That's a lie. OnlyFans and all upload content is checked by automated systems and human moderators. Uh, not at all. And this news has the internet shook. Okay. <sighs> Influencer Matt Bernstein shared a screenshot of a headline about the news to their Instagram story with the clever caption, quote, In other news, Spotify is banning music and Ikea is banning furniture. <laughs>
And it's true. OnlyFans has become somewhat synonymous with sex work over the past year. Yeah. As it exploded in popularity during the pandemic. Got it. And OnlyFans has been praised in the past for helping destigmatize sex work by giving sex workers a platform to make a living safely and on their own terms. Got it. But users of the platform had been noticing a shift in which creators the company seemed to be boosting the most. Sylphie, an OnlyFans creator, told Bloomberg, quote, If you look at all the promos, they don't promote us at all. Yeah. I noticed a huge drop in them promoting people who did sex work. An example of this new direction is the recent launch of OFTV, a free streaming service by OnlyFans that will not include any X-rated material. Yeah, they're out of their minds. They're trying to like get into like the whole streaming service, but no, there's only one type of stream that comes with Pornhub. Comes with Pornhub. Come to porn up. The streaming service features original content from Stream. more than 100 creators yeah. spanning fitness, cooking, comedy, health, music, and more. Oh, yeah. When I think of OnlyFans, I just think of comedy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Bella Thorne's being blamed. It's about four more minutes to this video. My life's too short to uh, keep playing it, but uh, they will say in the clip that Bella Thorne was like uploading bad content and it was like 20 bucks a month. So, get it. Got it good. Adam 22, I find absolutely positively fascinating. He's like the new Joe Rogan. He's like the new Howard Stern of people that pop a lot of Xanax throughout the day. Like he's this guy who has the No Jumper podcast where it looks like he's like hanging out and like not like a cell, but like he's behind like a, like um one of those fences, you know, that you see like at a park or a prison. And uh he's like um it's like a barbed wire fence. And he's got this podcast set up and he interviews these like mumble rappers and he'll be like, so what's the inspiration for your song getting turned? And the guy will be like, yeah, you know, uh, just getting turned in the club. And he talks to them for 90 minutes. Well, he has like these sexual allegations from like 14 years ago and we'll never know what happened. But when you read the info, it's like whenever I look at Adam 22 and he could be interviewing my favorite rapper, Jack Harlow or interviewing something funny, but I'm like, you're probably not a good dude. And I probably wouldn't want you to date my daughter. Well, I know for sure. I wouldn't want you to date my daughter, but, um, I like his body of work, so I watch a little bit of it. And uh, here he is talking about OnlyFans because his wife, Lena the Plug, um, she makes videos on OnlyFans. And it's very weird. One time, I was like, I want to see what his wife is about. So I went to Spank Bang, and I found it. And what was very weird was I'm like, where have I seen those head tattoos before? I'm like, oh, my God, I'm watching Adam 22 bang Lena. It was, it was weird. Yeah, it felt good. Only fans made a big announcement. No more porn, mm -hmm. right? So I'm thinking, how does this work for OnlyFans? That's like the whole thing. Right. What is the deal? What do you think? I mean, dude, all I got to say is that what are you? it's an opportune time for anybody who is going to be poised to profit off the instability of what's going on because it's like now there's all these different competitors. Hopefully we don't end up with another bitch ass company like OnlyFans who just, you know, sort of sopped up all the sex worker clout and then fled as soon as they had any kind of legal issues. I don't know the details about like how difficult it is for the credit card companies to have something. It seems like he forgets about the details a lot. Something to do with this because yeah. when you think about it, it's like would OnlyFans rather own and like hypothetical numbers, but would OnlyFans rather own a $50 million business that yeah. is on the good side of the credit card companies yeah. or a, you know, $20 billion business that everybody goes, everybody goes, uh, poor and poor, but it really is a business. He's just speaking numbers right now, man. Has all this sex on it and everything. I yeah. mean, I, I don't, I don't really understand the move personally, but yeah. apparently they're under a lot of pressure. No, that, that makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Maybe it's the deals that they already have intact. Mm, yeah. You know, it's not like they could just kind of... I think they just want to be mainstream. I think they want that cloud of being mainstream. It's but the thing stupid. is, you're exactly the fucking same as Twitch, YouTube, fucking Patreon. There's five million platforms that allow people to pay five bucks a month for premium content. Hell yeah, speak the truth and don't date my daughter. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour will be right back. This following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that DJ Tone Tampa on Instagram has the 
best printing company in all the Bay Area. I'm a man of my words. Posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need. And when you get that invoice, tell them I sent you. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. But Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Fella found an even older glory hole two towns over. Mm -hmm. Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about Neither. this. Such an elegant concept. A simple lowly hole Got to it. commemorate his glory. Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy cow. Ah! Ah! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! Is your significant other driving you nuts? Not at all. The self-proclaimed expert, Ryan Hoppy, will listen to your problems well, at 856-49-HOPPY. Oh, yeah, That's 856-49-HOPPY. <sighs> Hoppy's mind is like a circus. Oh, it is. And you're all invited. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Hi. Yeah, let's party. Like it's 1999 and I was six years old in kindergarten and my girlfriend was whatever age she was. I don't want to say her age. I'm making you all feel old. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. 856-49 Hoppy. 856-4946-773. Tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you'll, you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com, bro. <laughs> Wendy Williams hints that she has a new boyfriend posting. Oh, poor guy. Get this snap with a mystery. Uh, you know, she's getting all the inside info about him. So if the relationship ends, she can just explode and exploit him. Wendy Williams exploiting people. That's never happened before. <laughs> it's the only reason she exists. Man over the weekend. Wasn't that fabulous? No. 57 year old talk show host revealed she's seemingly in a new relationship. Oh, good. Sharing this pic on Instagram alongside the caption quote, My son's 21st birthday party on the yacht in Miami was everything he wanted. Even. Oh, she has a lot of snobs on a yacht. Oh, you're so relatable and cool. How much cocaine did you do? My boyfriend. Yeah. She said boyfriend people. All right. So she's got a boyfriend. Good for her. Um, Long time Hoppy Hour listeners are probably wondering, where the hell, you know, the Wendy Williams theme was, uh, copyright, I can't be hit with it. Ah, uh, but speaking to somebody I wish I could hit, Andrew Cuomo. First, he's accused of abandoning good judgment. Now, he's accused of abandoning his dog. Governor Andrew Cuomo allegedly left his dog, Captain, behind when he moved out of his residence at the governor's mansion in disgrace. Uh, it totally doesn't sound like something you would do. Captain is described as a high-strung mix of Shepherd, Siberian, and Malamute. Yeah, you know him and Andrew probably don't really get along. He probably bites him a lot. Of he has nipped a few people since Cuomo adopted him in 2018. Yeah, I don't really see Andrew Cuomo. He's a sociopath, so he's unorganized, and he's talentless, and he's an idiot. I don't really see him, you know, like, uh, doing a good job of taming and training the dog. Plus, he's apparently not house trained. Cuomo yeah, that's what I said. Oh, is trying to give the dog away, but no luck yet. A member of his staff recently took the dog home for a few days, but please save the dog from Andrew Cuomo. Decided Captain was too much dog to handle. And don't put him near a nursing home. Hmm. Uh, or an intern. I'm just kidding. Dog's got more credibility than him, but in the, actually, in the grand scheme of things, when it's all said and done, Every single person has more credibility than Andrew Cuomo. 
The swirl around Britney Spears is growing more mysterious. Just weeks after a judge granted her request to hire mm. her own attorney, mm. her dogs reportedly have been taken from her home. Jim Murray tells us what's going on. Okay. Seems like everything just goes on with Britney. According to a published report, Britney's dogs were taken away from her by her dog sitter. Mm. And that's what allegedly sparked a confrontation with her house. Man, she just, she just needs good people around her. Seems like everybody around her is not good. Housekeeper. Britney's dogs were taken to the vet over concerns the dogs were being neglected, Got according it. to the report. Mm -hmm. When the dogs weren't returned, Britney mm -hmm. allegedly became very upset. <sighs> Britney is said to have knocked the cell phone out of the housekeeper's hands. There were yeah, I feel like when Britney Spears gets mad, it's a little frightening. There's some sort of confrontation. I feel like there's a rage that I can't even imagine is real. Between Miss Spears. Like she just turns into one of the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park and one of her staff members. Actually, she should probably hang out with the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park to get her life on track. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour is now over. Hoppy Hour is now over. Hoppy Hour is now over. And like that, he's gone.